yeah, it's uh, it's pretty interesting. So Ruth gave a, a bit of an ele- uh, elevator pitch and had spoken about a, a strategy for sort of the entire community to take advantage of everything that's going on in the, the Pulse Chain ecosystem. And it, it caught a lot of attention. A lot of people were really excited. They had a lot of questions. Uh, she's a very busy person. She does so much for the community. She's working on a lot of architecture and things for the bridge. Uh, so I, I talked to her and, you know, she was kind of having to field a lot of questions. So we wanted to make sure that Galaxy Brains were doing what they're best at. This was something that, that us here in the community can handle. So we, we sort of nicknamed it and called this little strategy the tripod. And it's it's a way to interact with all the projects. So it revolves around three different steps. The first one is delegating the pulse to your validator of choice. The second is interacting with pulse swap, which is the pancake fork swap that uh, uh, RH is working on with the dev team. Uh, and interacting with the eHex and PHEX uh, liquidity pools. Uh, and then the third leg is parallel behavior on both chains. Uh, that's sort of the, the three legs of the strategy to interact around launch. Okay, great. So where do we start? With leg one? Yeah. Uh, it's pretty much what everyone's discussed, right? When it comes to Pulse, it's a delegated proof of a stake system. So you are able to get yield based on the commissions that come from a validator uh, by delegating to them. Validators are going to be who run the transactions. They run the they run the whole the whole the whole chain, right? They're the ones who maintain consensus. So they're ordered so the top 30 in stake or who are active, uh, and to incentivize people to delegate, you get paid a commission on there, and that commission is what we you know it can be referred to as staking or delegate a, a trustless yield. There, you don't have to give up custodianship of your coins. You're not having to interact with anything with admin keys or something separate. This is just trustless. You participating in consensus. So they're really really unique aspect to a DP a proof of work. And it, you know, it's, it's trustless yield. You're, you're planning on whole token. It should have all this, all this great price appreciation. Uh, so this is, this is gravy. This is just for essentially free money to yield and, and to participate in consensus. That leg's very simple. So this is the plan many of us already have for our pulse bag. Is there any reason not to? There is a very small chance uh, in some systems where your principal can be slashed, uh, penalties that happen from a uh, delegation or a vast. So validators will have their principal up and they can absolutely be slashed. But as delegators, as the vast majority of the community, what is most likely is just that the only risk that you could incur from slashing would be the rewards that you had received from your delegation. So there should be no risk to your principal. This is something that we do just want to get that last two and three percent of, of confidence to make sure now there should be no risk other than just basically not getting your reward if there was a malicious act from the validator or downtime things like that so it, there should be essentially no risk awesome uh, i assume this is uh what the majority had planned to do originally anyway but um so how about the second leg it sure. sounds like there's there is more going on there especially for those who are not familiar with liquidity providing uh, and again, this community is very big on being uh, security centric and being aware of the risk. So there, there is a lot we won't dig into with liquidity pools, but we just really want to get the strategy out there. Then the rest of us can kind of work through this, uh, you know, try to find holes, poke holes. We want to still man the argument. We all want to make money. We want to do what's best for the ecosystem. Uh, so, but we're at least going to give the overview. Our agent and the dev team hole swap, which is going to be a fork of pancake swap. It's an opportunity to provide liquidity. So the unique advantage when it comes to doing this on Pulse Chain is obviously the fee difference versus Ethereum. That Pulse Chain is an RH project, you know, not ran by miners and all the things that go on. And the things that we would be operating with are also RH projects being EHEX and PHEX. So the way you would interact with this pool is once we have the wide bridge up, which allows you to move multiple assets over, you would actually bridge your HEX from Ethereum over to Pulse Chain and then you would put it in the liquidity pool paired with your PHEX. Why this is such a, a kind of kind of very silver bullet opportunity is because typically whenever you provide liquidity, you had to buy both sides. But here you got one side for free. So that reduces both your exposure, your risk, the input to get the same rewards, uh, your chance of impermanent loss, things like that. But an entire kind of RH ecosystem that the community is very comfortable with. You're on, you're on Pulse Chain, you're in Pulse Swap, and you're providing liquidity for both tokens there. So assuming that those are both relatively close in price is sort of kind of the general consensus right now. If they're not, that does change things. Assuming that they are, you would be providing liquidity in both hex. You'd be adding thickness to the liquidity there, which should actually help tie those prices together. 
uh, which is good for everyone. And then you'd be receiving that governance token. The reward token that comes from Pulse Swap uh, is again going to be RH's fourth coin. Everyone's going to want to participate in that. And if you look at CakeSwap and the reward tokens for most liquidity, they typically appreciate extremely fast and extremely well. So the methodology on this is that by having, by by operating inside of these liquidity pools, you're going to be collecting an asset that we would think would appreciate and outpace the gains that you would have in staking at that time. So that's kind of the magic. Uh, we do have a little bit of a graphic here. So Dr. Pulse is going to go over that real quick and that, that should help give some context. Cool. Cool. So, so the idea is that providing liquidity for the pair in the short term would uh, give you gains to reinvest back into HEC. The idea is that you're, you're maximizing sort of what you can make in this window in the short term by participating in all these projects. So, you know, a lot of us have never provided liquidity for the risk and things that go on. This is going to be likely the most and most beneficial way that you could operate inside of a liquidity pool, especially if you're a, a more novice user. So again, there, there's still risk. There's still ways to mess this up. Please do your research. We'll talk more in depth. This is just, again, to kind of get this conversation going on the strategy. Um, but the idea would be that you you maximize your time in that liquidity pool, catching the big part of that move uh, on the appreciation on the governance token. And then at that point, you can now reassess and say, OK, do I want to, you know, do I want to move this into PHEX and take advantage of what we have there? Has is there an advantage on, on the EHEX side? Is that T-share price been outpaced by short stakes by, at this point on Pulse? You know, you can pick your side there or you can move into Pulse or you could even hold the governance token and continue to you. Uh, the window to refer to again where you see that 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 green window close event, it may not really come from you. You may decide to go ahead and hold that governance token, or again, you could, could reinvest. I, I believe the majority of us would just window, catch the big part of that curve, kind of collect that, which should be gain under that curve, up that into hex and essentially stake it out. So the idea is to appreciation window, take advantage of launches where you really get these outrageous, and then you're gonna be able to transfer them again, all in an RH project, all in his ecosystem, where we feel comfortable, and put those into long T shares, as in hit your quad five, put them out, stake it for the, put it in pulse, take your pick on those there. And that's that's where that green window close event is. Oh, there's a fair bit in there. Um, so, okay, so why don't you tell us about the, the third leg? So the third leg is kind of interesting, this intuitive of what some people's plans were, but it makes a lot of sense, especially the more the community tends to operate. So this is one of those, when you look at a lot of like technical analysis, they tend to be kind of self-fulfilling in a way where if, if you get a pattern, whether the pattern realistically means up or down, if everybody agrees on it, it tends to go that way. If everybody thinks this is a buy, everybody hits the green button, it moves up, and it was a buy opportunity now. So Ruth's idea on this is uh, the truth engine, as she describes it. Um, and again, if you ask Ruth, you're going to get a much, much more technical answer. So we're, we're so appreciative of the galaxy brains we have in the community. But the idea is that if you act the same on the Ethereum side with your hex as you do on the Pulse side of your hex, they maintain parity. All your e head and the PX, you start to get uh, space between, you give arbitrage opportunities, things like that, and permanent loss can occur. But if you operate the same, at least in the short term and say the first six months, basically in this window event that we're looking to maximize, if you operate the same on both sides, you essentially have to keep the price, right? So if you buy, price moves up. So if you buy the same on both sides, you technically kind of move the price the same, you provide liquidity the same. The idea is the more the behaviors match, the more we take care of the ecosystem and, and push both both projects, both eHex and PHEX, uh, or HEX on Ethereum and HEX on Pulse, to parity, which is already good. We hold bags. That the majority of us have long stakes in both sides. We're not interested in killing Ethereum. That That's where our golden goose is. You know, you know, HEX that's treated so many of us so well, why this community is so tight, is on Ethereum. We, we don't want to kill Ethereum. We don't want to kill eHex. We're super excited about the new incentives we have, but that doesn't mean we take care of that beautiful chart in the community that we have now. So by acting the same on both chains, we take care of both projects, allow these price together in parity, and you also minimize the risk you have in those liquidity pools. So if you if you look kind of traditionally at liquidity pools, stable coins tend to be where there's less risk as far as impermanent risk when it comes to having two admin keys on sides and things like that. But the idea is that if you don't have a lot of price volatility between them, it's less likely to incur loss. So by doing this, we operate it inside of the community, we protect both chains, and we actually minimize our risk of participating in that pool and likely increasing the chances that, that participating 
and having that governance token appreciation far outpaces any sort of impermanent loss that may be seen there from the side. And again, even impermanent loss is a little different when you got one side for free, but we still want to maximize what we can. Uh, events like the snapshot, the launch of a new chain, these don't come around very often. That's why the Telegram has 50,000 people. That's why people are losing their minds and sacrificing at crazy rates. So we want to maximize this opportunities. Don't happen often. Uh, and this parallel activity, while it may have been counterintuitive, is, is something that could be very beneficial for both projects, the community at AGS, and the opportunity to to maximize this opportunity to to acquire that governance token before we decide to shuffle that gains into EHEX, PHEX, Pulse, wherever it is that you are really looking at, at optimizing for the future. Cool. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm also excited, and I'm I'm stoked that you've you've come on and uh, been able to dull it down in layman's terms because yeah, I, I've listened to Ruth talk myself and. Um, it's, it's, it can go over the head quite easy. So I appreciate uh, you breaking it down like this. It's awesome. Of course. Yeah, we're, we're, we're blessed to have Ruth. Um, you guys have heard me say before, if you if you guys are familiar with me in the, the main chat, that I actually don't like doing these sometimes. I feel like I take too much of the limelight from the real big minds. People like Saker, Kyle, you know, Ruth, out this great stuff, Angel Black. These are people who contribute Phoenix skill sets. Triple it, Dad. Shout out to you and Scar, brother. That's why I got it here for you. Uh, you know, we have a great community. Uh, yourself, Dr. Pulse, putting together content that even if it's things that aren't necessarily things that don't have in other places, this documentation here is for our community. These are faces that people, if they watch the videos here, even if you could sort of go look at liquidity pools and impermanent loss in other places, when they watch this video here, they get a chance to come back and interact with us and say, hey, Ty, what was going on here? Or, you know, Walrus, what was your feeling? on X, Y, and Z, complete rubbish. Let's work through this again. There's a better strategy for the community. So I, I think this content sort of by the community for the community is extremely powerful. And we just want to be as humble and as gracious as we can to, to all the galaxy brains who give their time. You know, Funding Jim has stepped in a lot here lately. He got some time in there. There's just a lot of people who contribute who are very, very expensive if you have to get their time somewhere else. And luckily they're, you know, they do that what they can to, to share that time for free in the community. So I appreciate you guys having me on and uh, you know, hopefully this will generate some discussion. There's a lot of variables can change out of and we can discuss and if we can poke holes and come up with a better strategy in time, we can. Um, and if not, I think this is a, a great place to start as far as interacting with all these great projects, taking advantage of the launch, uh, you know, and everyone getting rich, making gains and, and taking advantage of the eco. Cool, man. Cool. Obviously, goes without saying that, uh, uh, yeah, 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 this is not this financial is not advice. It's purely for educational purposes and um, the strategies for other people to research and and make up their own mind. Absolutely, it's a pleasure to be on, guys. Cheers! Thanks so much. Please, guys, everyone, feel free. Let's let's work through the strategy. Um, you know, again, we're we're trying to pass on good knowledge from people who are very very savvy. Paul Cole's in it. No one here has an ego. Let's find great ways. Let's work together as a community. Let's make sure all these projects flourish and go make some money. Yeah, well, well said, Warris. I agree. And we've got, we've got a great little team ourselves. Um, so many to mention in there. Triplet Dad, Crypto Fruits, Papa Absolutely. Bona, Eskimo, Dr. Pulse, who's filming right now and will most likely chop it up yourself. Uh, GD. Uh, Crypto JJ, Mama, our Jamie, resident TA Crypto profession. Mama. Yeah, there's, there's just a crew of people behind us that are always finding finding content and um no doubt they'll be on scene too doing some of their own uh some of their own work so i'm looking forward to that also yeah cheers again guys let's all ride the magic carpet appreciate it thanks for coming on walrus